Hi again, everybody. This is part two of my light unit review. So let's jump right into this. Uh, the first thing I want to cover is the difference between color addition and color subtraction. Okay. Color addition is uh, in physics, perhaps the more fundamental of the two types of analysis for color. Uh, we first have to recognize that in the electromagnetic spectrum, Roy G. Biv, there are three fundamental primary colors of addition. Those three uh, primary colors of addition are red, green, and blue. Okay, maybe you've heard of RGB cables that go uh, from a, a, a Blu-ray player or a DVD player into a television uh, input. Uh, in fact, the very monitor I'm using, uh, there's an LCD screen um, here on my laptop. And the way that this thing works is there's tiny little pixels, okay? And uh, right now, if I take a look right here, okay, on my computer screen, uh, oops. If I take a look right here in this box, I can see uh, it's giving off a white piece of paper look, right? It's not a piece of paper, but it looks like white paper. Okay, the reason why this appears white is because uh, these little tiny pixels, okay, really close to each other, uh, there's a red, a green, and a blue that are sitting real, like little squares, okay? And those three squares, to zoom in on that, all near each other, are giving me equal intensity red, green, and blue light. So what happens is my eye detecting that is going to have red, green, and blue color frequencies added together it makes white light. So this is what you could do um, with a spotlight system or, a pro or like a projector screen, uh, the, the projector itself that we have in the classroom uh, that I use to project images onto the front of the room. Uh, what happens there, I don't, uh, well, let's, uh, this isn't gonna look as good as the notes, but uh, let's say you have a red spotlight and a green spotlight and a blue spotlight. What happens is here, where those three colors, red, green, and blue, are added together, you get white light, okay? Um, that is called color addition, all right? Again, this is used for uh, cell phone or LCD, LED screens. Uh, this is used with projection. So projectors use this kind of physics. Um, now, what's cool about this is you can create uh, the secondary colors, um, magenta, cyan and yellow by adding two of the primary colors of addition so red and blue makes magenta uh so i don't uh, have this color coded here but you can check that out in the lesson red and blue combined together make magenta green and blue makes cyan red and green makes yellow over the years i've heard some memory helpers um, to help you sort of uh, remember these combinations a little bit quicker uh r and b music Red plus blue makes magenta light. Um, really great yogurt. Red plus green light added together makes yellow light. And uh, green plus blue makes cyan. Uh, if you're a Green Bay Packers fan, you could say Green Bay are the champions. If you're a Bears fan like I am, you'd say Green Bay is crap. Um, anyway, uh, silly, uh, just helper uh, ideas here. Uh, green plus blue light makes cyan light. Magenta is kind of a pink purple. Cyan is a light blue, kind of an ocean blue. It doesn't look like uh, blue devil blue. It's kind of a light blue and then yellow. Uh, I was just using the highlighter function here. Uh, everybody knows yellow uh, from you know, bananas or whatever. So anyway, those are the secondary colors. Um, there's this idea called complementary colors. Uh, so really, if you wanted to hack this a little bit, you'd say, well, how could I make white light from just two colors? What could I do? to make white light from two colors. Uh, well, knowing, uh, for example, I'll use this in the middle here, if green and blue combines to make cyan and green and blue are here, uh, really what you could do is take cyan plus red and cyan plus red added together will give you white light, okay? Uh, again, because cyan is not a fundamental color, it's really just the same as saying red, green, and blue makes white light, but cyan, uh, so if you took a spotlight that was cyan and a red spotlight and you shine them onto the same place on a projected screen or a projector screen, you'd get white light. Uh, now, I want to talk very quickly about color subtraction. This tends to be confusing for people. Um, and uh, let me give you one example to show you why color subtraction is different from color addition. 
This has to do more with pigments. Um, why something appears the way it does if you if you paint a, a pic, paint something or draw a picture uh, or you look at something uh, in the real world that's colored, why does it appear the color that it does? This has to do again with sort of pigmentation. Uh, I'll do my example over here uh, off to the side. So let's say you're looking at a a, a blue birdhouse, okay, painted blue. And that birdhouse is sitting in white light environment. Okay, it's not in a red uh, spotlight, you know, a dark room with a red light on it. It's just an it's just in a normal visible light condition, being outside in the sun. The sun gives us all of the energies from the electromagnetic spectrum. The part of it that we see with our naked eye is just the red through violet part of the, of the uh, radiation emitted from our star. Okay, it's actually a white star. Uh, the reason why it seems to be called a yellow star, and, and little kids will draw the sun like this, right? Little kids will draw the sun like that when they're making pictures, is because we have a blue sky. And um, uh, not without getting too deep into that, uh, the star, if you actually look at our sun outside of our atmosphere, it's a white star, okay? It gives off white visible light uh, as far as what we can detect with the naked eye. Uh, anyway, without, getting back to the point, uh, here we have white light. Oops. Let's get rid of the, let's do draw with touch here. Okay, so we have, um, okay, we have white light hitting the, the blue um, paint, okay? Now, that white light is actually fundamentally red, green, and blue, okay? So the reason you and I see this as blue is because the pigment, the paint, must be absorbing um red and green aka yellow light okay so red and green is getting subtracted from the white light by this pigment okay so minus red minus green that means the blue is reflected and that's why we see the blue paint the blue birdhouse um this is just one example of many uh, but again, when, when a frequency is absorbed by something colored, then that's color subtraction, okay? Uh, the secondary colors uh, in color addition are known as the primary colors of subtraction pigments. Magenta, cyan, and yellow, there was an activity called painting with uh, magenta, yellow, cyan, and uh, those are actually the, the, the main three paint pigments you'd want if you were an artist and you were trying to create different uh, uh, colors on a canvas, okay, magenta, yellow, cyan are the prime are the primary colors of subtraction. Um, okay, so uh, that's taking a little bit too long. I'm going to move on um, and speed up a little bit. Uh, let's go into flat mirrors next. Flat mirrors rely on an idea called the law of reflection. Okay. Uh, without getting too in depth on this, a flat mirror looks like, uh, in fact, an interesting question, which was addressed in the lesson, is how much of the mirror, uh, how big does the mirror have to be if you wanted to see your full self in it? Check that out. Um, to get into this very quickly, uh, flat mirrors create a virtual image, not to be confused with real images. And uh, this is a, 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 a byproduct of the law of reflection. If you're standing three feet away from the mirror, your image is three feet behind the mirror, your virtual image that is. And uh, without getting into ray diagrams, um, you get this really uh, interesting result. Uh, the other thing to examine is why does the mirror apparently seem to flip our image left and right, not up and down? It has to do with the fact that the mirror actually inverts you in the Z axis. Uh, the, there's a physics girl video uh, about this that does a great job of explaining uh, how that occurs. Again, it's an application of the law of reflection. Okay, uh, moving along uh, to curved mirrors. Uh, curved mirrors have two varieties, the convex and the concave. Uh, convex mirrors are a little bit more uh, simple to study. You always get upright and smaller images, okay? Uh, think of the 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 side rear view mirrors, uh, the the side mirrors in your car. Okay, uh, diverging mirrors, convex mirrors, not very uh, diverse outcomes possible by using uh, the 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 
I guess the convex mirror would look kind of like. Well, let me get. Would look like this. Okay, so here's the mirror. Okay, concave mirror. So and the light would be coming from this side. Concave mirrors on the other uh, on the other hand. These are terrible pictures, but I, I think you get the idea. They look like this. And you can get a, a wide range of outcomes here. You can get um, images that are inverted and smaller or larger. You can get images that are upright and larger, the makeup mirror. You get a lot, a lot of diversity of outcome. And it depends on where the object sits on the principal axis relative to the focal point of that mirror. So if your object is far away from the focal point, if your object is within the focal length or focal point, uh, that's the makeup mirror. That's when you get images that are upright and larger. Uh, you get this really cool diversity of outcomes with those kinds of mirrors. Okay. Uh, just to zap forward a little bit, time is uh, ticking very quickly here, and I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Uh, this is more uh, recent lesson topics uh, that you guys have, have gone through. So I think it's uh, fitting that I can go through this a little bit quicker without much detail. Uh, Snell's Law. Uh, to switch gears is about bending of light, the refraction of light. Um, so we have index of refraction for the light in the first medium. We have the index of refraction for light in the second medium. And uh, this is the uh, angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. And uh, effectively, we can calculate how the light bends if we know something about the medium that the light started in and the medium that the light entered into. Uh, check that out. Make sure you can uh, do a sample problem or two mathematically using Snell's Law. Uh, total internal reflection is a, uh, a lesson about an application of Snell's Law where we can calculate what's called the critical angle. Um, this is something that relates to fiber optics and things like that. Uh, Without getting into a calculation, check that out uh, in the lesson. Uh, you can solve for the critical angle under which light doesn't leave uh, its first medium. It stays in there, and um, you get this uh, internal reflection uh, byproduct being that your angle of incidence is greater than the angle, uh, the critical angle that you can calculate using mathematics. Okay, last but not least, we have the two types of lenses. This is the, the lesson that is. Uh, directly preceding uh, the, this review. And uh, converging diverging lenses, uh, just to show you a very quick picture, uh, here's a light ray coming in parallel to the principal axis. What happens is that light ray is going to, I should be using a straight edge here, but it's, I'm using my, uh, my pen on the computer screen here. It squeezes the light in towards the principal axis. It's a converging lens, okay? Uh, to contrast that with a diverging lens, lenses are designed to be um, transparent, not opaque like mirrors. Lenses are transparent. And what happens in this case is the light is going to uh, bend away from the principal axis, hence diverging lens. Uh, we would call this the concave lens. We would call this the convex lens. And uh, what's really cool about this is you can find out if you have glasses like I do um, and you're, you're nearsighted like I am, you can find out why your glasses are the way they are by studying uh, ray diagrams uh, for uh, uh, lenses. Okay, uh, that's all I have for you on the second review. Talk to you again. Bye-bye.